I'm Tamima and this is Real Talk. Being male is biology and being a man is a choice. Well, on today's show, we'll be getting real on manhood. Welcome to the show. They call them the four pillars of a man. That's identity, responsibility, sexuality, and legacy. Something could be wrong, but because you're used to it, it appears right. It could just simply be that you've been bottling up all this anger all these years and you don't know how to deal with it. So the ability to process those emotions and identify them and say, what I'm feeling right now is fear. If I train my kid what I know and already I know nothing, what do you think I'm bringing up? Welcome to the show now. I have a panel full of men, distinguished men at that. I have Paul Kuria Waweru, who is a bishop in Joyce Center. He's a comedian, a book writer, and motivational speaker as well. Welcome to the show, Mr. Kuria. Thank you very much. I also have with me coach Robert Burale. Thank Karibu Kwenye Real Talk. Thank you very much. Waiting for some of that pizzazz with the wise words. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah. And also we have Diane Masinde, who is a life coach and relationship expert. And I finally have Mongera Mutiga, who is an entrepreneur, a father, and a husband. He runs a platform called Papa Bear. Welcome to Real Talk. Thank you. So today we are talking about manhood. Mm. And I started off by saying that being male is biology, but being a man is a choice. So in your own words, what does manhood mean in today's society? Well, um, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, manhood is about um, having an identity um, and being clear about what it is, what your purpose in life is. Um, I think for, for many people, being a man is not just um, the biological part of it, but really what it is that you're doing, what it is that you're building, what it is that you're creating, um, and the leadership that you take in whatever little sphere that you have. We can't all be the president, we can't all be these big leaders, but all of us as men have a, an area, a thing, or a sphere that we um, are dominant in. And being a man is about identifying what that is and taking leadership in that area. Okay, and what about for you, Mr. Kuria? What does manhood uh, mean? I think to me, <coughs> I look at it in different angle. Because uh, for me to get that man, I have to see the source. Where has the man come from? For me to call him a man. Because we have men who are born by single mothers, the others who are being raised in children's homes, they even don't know their parents. The others who have both parents who are very violent, the mother is beating the father every day. So I think to get that man now, you have to look, what is that man's role model? So you're so, saying that we may have a lot of males. Yeah, a lot of males. But, but to get a real man is very hard. Wearing a suit does not mean you're a man. Being with a black tie and whatever, that does not mean I'm a man. Yeah. Let me do the action. For the action will show whether I'm a man or I'm just an imitation. And what about for you, Coach Robert, in your own words, Burale? It is manhood. Uh, both have said very correct things, absolutely. Just to add in is to say it's the process of growing into manhood, not just in age, but in values, in understanding your role, as uh, Mwangara said, in society, and carrying through the attributes that people would say, this one has grown into the fullness of a man in responsibility, in value, because the society has given us different things. Some societies have told you, or cultural beliefs have told you, if you have six wives, you're a man. Mm -hmm. If you sleep around, I tell the young boys, if you sleep around, it doesn't make you a man. You could be a man in beard and in age, but not in value and stature. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's just process, and not just in age, but in value and understanding the responsibility that you have. That, of course, is also affected and shaped by your environment, your culture, your family, and the people around you. And Diane, finally? Um, Despite of your background, it's coming to maturity in four key areas. I call them the four pillars of a man. That's identity, responsibility, sexuality, and legacy. So it's coming to maturity of that, you know, which is a process that sometimes you can get mentorship in, sometimes you cannot get mentorship in. That's why you jipange, jijue, what kind of a man do I become? So it is for you to come to that place of maturity whereby I am in charge and in control of the kind of person that I become and the expression of my masculinity, which is very, very important. So I like what uh, Mankush said. Eh? So I'll call him Mankush by yeah, a yeah, comedian yeah. name. Yeah. And it's very important because all of you are alluding to a stage in life whereby it's all about growth. It's not an absolute. You have to grow into it. There are a lot of lessons mm -hmm. in it. And you're talking about 
where you are sort of like where you the factory where you come from where, how you're brought up your experiences as a person influence the type of man that you become so i want us to start off by looking at the sins of the past Bef because for us to accept that today why people are now saying that the male child lacks mentors that means that somewhere along the way we got it wrong so in your own words what do you feel like are certain negative traits or negative values that come from our past or our culture? Well, uh, <clears throat> you can have a man who is coming from that dirty culture or make, be, make, may call it very hard and difficult culture. And I get married and now I'm a father and my child needs to be a man. Who is he going to copy? Is it the mother or me? And already me, I'm already corrupt. Is only that by because of age and Kindabrari are telling me, Sasa umekuwa mze, hoa, 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 So I, 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 go, I go and get married. And now here I'm having a kid. If I train my kid what I know, and already I know nothing, what do you think I'm bringing up? So if you came that, from a toxic environment, yes. you're not ready. Gurue hata ukimuosha na umtandikia kitanda na uweke bed covers, atoke hapo razimu waende kwa matope. <laughs> na pengine nikikuliza sasa kama wewe mankush ukiangalia maisha yako na ukiangalia pengine wale ambao walikuja mbele yako baba yako uh, your grandfather do you feel like there are lessons that perhaps they got wrong a lot like what a lot my father was very violent he was not giving my mom any peace i don't want to be my father in my home i don't want my grandfather was very good but he was a womanizer yeah, I don't want it. So lucky me that I have an experience that I know through, through, through the spiritual line that I can be delivered. What about the millions who don't know about deliverance? So you and they are not ready even to listen to their teachers. Mm -hmm. They are not reason to, they need to sit down and listen to what brother think. Because once they are born with something protruding uh, in their eyes, they think they are men. So they don't want to hear anything else from somebody else. They think they know. And you know what you're saying is very important because you first have to acknowledge that I came from somewhere toxic. Yeah. If you don't recognize that it is toxic, you will not be able to sort of like put that away or work mm -hmm. to change it. You'll be stuck in the same toxicity. Like now, let me ask you, let me ask you something and my, my brother here. Walk around the streets of Nairobi. Out of four young, five young men, two have, uh, two have uh, uh, done their hair and maybe three have got earrings. Are they doing that like their father or like their mother? So who, have taken a, who, has, who has taken 80% of their life? Is it a man or a woman? Now this, this topic is... What, is what, what, what do you say? Because I'm trying to look for someone in the audience who has the lines and the earrings that he's talking about. <laughs> it's the woman. They're taking, they're taking after the yeah. woman. Why? Because the mama is always there. Mama is always there for me. So I have a lot of mama in me even though I have this thing downstairs but i have 80 percent of my life is mommy there is no daddy because daddy either was expelled by my mom shouted to because it contributed to my father's absence in my upbringing my mother contributed a lot okay let me hear from robin you talk about the scenes of the past if you look at your life your father your grandfather so what are those things and values that you feel like, okay, they could have done better here? Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't complain more about much about my father. He was very present. But when I look at my grandfather, he had like 16 wives. And the first two wives are sisters. Then wife number three, four, five are sisters. There's, there's some kind of something is not right there. Mm -hmm. You understand? And then the, the kids, his sons from his first wife, all divorced. And then as we came, and then we also divorced. Mm -hmm. So then you see that line that has come from somewhere. And it takes you to see that there is something not right. Because if you're not careful, something could be wrong. But because you're used to it, it appears right. So now when you go to other spaces, now I sit and I have coffee with Diane. And then it starts saying one or two things. I'm like, OK, so what I thought was normal 
is actually abnormal. So life challenges you Yes, now. so you may come out from a place that is so wrong, but because that's all you know, you think it's right. Then now when you get, and that's why I talk to men, when you get to other spaces, you get to hear something different, then you're like, oh my goodness, so I am wrong. Then you can have an avenue or the heart to receive help. You understand? But until you acknowledge that something is wrong and if I don't kill it, mm -hmm. it will finish me. Yeah. So the biggest mistake our parents did, what you do not deal with, your children have to carry the battle. Absolutely. So yes. you have to finish for our generation so that our children don't pick up our battles. And in some spaces it's called a generational curse. Yes. So we are picking those battles. Mm -hmm. We are picking those battles. There, you see, you're born as a man. Maybe this is your starting point right here. But your father didn't finish your battle. So instead of starting from here, you got to go back. Deal with that battle. By the time you're in your starting point, life has beaten you. That's why you see men walking, talking to themselves. If you see a man talking to himself, don't call him mad. That man is in a boardroom meeting. If you see a man uh, sitting in a bar by himself and you wonder, what's wrong? Is he that bored? Does he, does he not have friends? No. But because by the time he's getting to his starting point, he's already tired. He has wasted years fighting battles his father did not finish. So as men, let's finish our battle so that our children mm -hmm. don't pick up the battle. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. Mutiga, you run uh, Papa Bear. Yep. So now that you're talking about the sins of the past, yep. so looking at your own life, looking at your father and your grandfather, so again, for you, what do you believe they could have done better? Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm like Robert. I mean, my, my dad was very involved, still is, until today. Um, my granddad um, died some several years ago, so I, I didn't know him that well. But I can tell you one word that um, that generation did not deal with, emotions. When we think of emotions, you think of oh, someone crying and all this depression and all that. That's part of it, yes. But there's a bigger picture with emotions. Uh, emotions can be anything. It can be stress. It can be anger. Um, and what our, our parents did not do is they did not teach us how to deal with emotions, how to process them. As how men to especially. Them. Yes. Because girls be allowed to cry. Yeah. Dads hug you. Yeah, yeah. But mm -hmm. how, and literally, I think also, especially the older generation, yep. you can see the difference in how the girl child was treated vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis how the boy child was treated. Exactly. And being able to process those emotions. If, if my son is upset, I shouldn't shut him down and tell him, you know, you're Real not supposed to be cry. upset. Real men don't deal with stuff like that. It's, it's okay. Emotion is not a bad thing. Even when we hear the word emotion, people think, oh, it's about crying and all that. Not necessarily. Being able to process whatever you're, you're feeling, whatever's happening around you, is a very strong skill. And I don't think many of us know it because we were never taught how to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's why people are, are getting depressed. Young people are, you know, suicide rates are going up through the roof because people just don't know how to process emotions. So uh, we have men who are walking around getting into adulthood with a handicap yeah. that they cannot even comprehend. Yeah, they don't even know. You don't even know what's going on. Yeah. You just know that you're upset or you're depressed or there's something that's weighing down on you. Yeah. It could just simply be that you've been bottling up all this anger all these years and you don't know how to deal with it. So the ability to process those emotions and identify them and say, what I'm feeling right now is fear. Fear, I'm scared, I don't know what to do. Being able to identify that and process it, that's something that we, we, we were never taught. And what about for you, Dan? Um, allow me to ask, eh? has the boy self been neglected? Yes. By who? By, By men. Society. 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 Okay. And who has been there for the girl child? Who has uplifted the girl child? Society, both men and women. Okay. I just wanted to find out something. Eh? Mm. Now, for my particular situation, I remember watching my dad die because I was there when my dad passed on. It was a very emotional moment for me because I reflected back on so many things that he had taught me and so many things that actually I learned from him and what, what to do and what not to do. And I remember one of the things that was so strong for me at that particular time is I need to decide the kind of man that I'm going to become. It's my responsibility. My, my dad chose to be the kind of man that he was. I need to be, choose to be the kind of man that I am. Every single man needs to choose the kind of man you're going to become. Because let me tell you this. Once Umefika 18, you, where you're an adult, you need to take up responsibility. So Sazingine, society is a for the boy child. Society is a Maybe society is a for the boy child. Sazingine is a like the thing, but the most important thing is where come on, Ume, what do you choose to do? Who do you want to become? And that's why I say, as men, you need to have a vision. A vision. What kind of a man do I want to be? Because not everybody is going to get you. Not everybody is going to understand you. Once you have your vision, and then you have now also values. Because a lot of us men, we are lonely. To go drinking buddies when you're out to join. To go up or to go party after party, not out to join. Sindio, this is my strangers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs>
because we're talking about the scenes of the past. So I want to hear from my co-hosts. And tell me, and let's just be honest with each other here. Looking back at how you were brought up, what do you wish your father taught you? And you can genuinely say, now that I'm grown and I look around me, I see a boy my age and I see how he has it together. And I remember where I come from. I'm working to get better, but I wish either my father, my uncle, my grandfather, any the manhood around you would have taught you that lesson. Um, uh, for me, I think uh, I wish my dad and ni like he could have more free time with other kids. Cause me, I uh, I was this kid that uh, although you are a man or a, or a, uh, you're a boy, una fawingi ko nyumba, kama as in like five apo, uh, una you do some some chores, eh? You know I'm the firstborn, eh? So you have to take care of the the little ones, eh? So I wish angeniacha ni mingle sana na the others. Uh, ingekuwa more easy uh, when it comes to maybe socializing with other people, right? Saizi uh, niko mwanaume. So you find it hard to socialize? Yeah, because you know you are kind of locked up, eh? So it's kind of hard now, and like you can go somewhere and sit for almost one hour without talking to the next person, you see? So uh, I think I would have wished. Thank you for sharing. I think. Um, Amos, one thing that I could really like my dad to have with me is time. I grew up when I needed much of my dad's love, and he wasn't around for me. I grew up like being that I was lonely with only my mom, which part of my life it affected me. And I started being mentored by my spiritual father, who's my bishop. That's the time I came to realize that parental love, more so the father love, has to be there for the boy child. Are you a parent today? I'm about to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and what aspirations do you have now with your own child? Okay, in, one thing I'll do for my child in future, have time for him or her, that when he grows up, he'll be a responsible man. Like some of the things I just look people doing and ask, ask myself, if my dad could have time with me or with us as a family, much could have been done. Okay, thank you for thank sharing. You. My name is Charles, and I'm grateful that I've been here to see this debate because as for me, I've been brought up by a single woman, a single lady who has shown me more love than even a father. We find that me, there are things that a father should sit down and tell his child. You see, at an age, you are supposed to be talking with your dad, telling him how you feel, how things go on. There are things you can't even talk to your mother, but of being a boy, you see? So it's becoming a, one big disadvantage for you because you're not even much open to her because she cannot understand which situation you're in. We find that father's love are important, as for me, my father's love has become, at a particular age, I've known him timeless. I find that there are things I should know at a specific age. I didn't. Because you were I was, learning from your friends. Yes. That's another character which I admire and I love. Because my father, if he was there, there are things you find that I can't do or I couldn't do. Have you met your father? Yes, now. And how is your relationship? Let's say it's it's strategically because we barely talk. Yes, I only see him. Even good morning is becoming a difficulty. Yes, it's just we pass, we pass, we pass. And I he wants, he says that you are a grown man. You, you don't need to talk. You see, there are things that he's, he's trying to avoid. You see, but me, I would say a father's love is important because that talk. That relationship, that love is important. Okay, right. So, of course, some very candid and honest revelations here from my co-host here in the audience. And today we are measuring on manhood. And fatherhood is a very important role of the man within the society. So when you have a generation of young men who are saying, Dad, talk to me. Dad, show me that you love me. 
That is why we're having this conversation. So if you're a man, get on that hashtag, Real Talk with Tamima. Let me know which part of manhood are you struggling with? Which part of fatherhood are you struggling with? Are you struggling with? Still more to come, but right now it's time for a very quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Real Talk. Now, one of the things I love about hosting this show is just really how we use real people and real experiences to teach you. People come to this show hoping to be just part of the audience, you know, sit and watch. And then they become part of the show by just sharing very personal things about their lives. And today we are measuring on men. We are trying to correct what went wrong. We have a generation of men who say that I was not fathered. We have a generation of women who are raising children without men in their lives. So my panel, distinguished in various areas, will just be trying to help us decode what is manhood. So early on, my audience and my guests were sharing about the sins of the past, and we found out what they wished their fathers had done in their lives. So I want to find out from my audience, who here is a father? Okay, so we have mostly sons. And le let me rephrase that question. Who here is a father but not actively present in his or her child's, in his child's life, because, I don't know if you Kenya. I don't know if you Kenya. I don't know if you're in Kenya. I don't know if Okay. So let's pick it up from there, because that's the other side of the coin. The sins of the, the, sins of the father become the sins of the son. And looking at the fact that they are yearning for that fatherly love, but at the same time, they are also repeating the mistakes of the past. So probably let me start with you, Mongera. Yeah. Um, one of the problems that we have with fatherhood in this world, in this day and age, is presence. Um, and I mean, you, you, you can see, the numbers show that there's a lot of men who are not present in their, their children's lives. And presence goes beyond physical presence. It's even being emotionally and um, engaged in your child's life. You can have a child in your house. You live with children in your house, but you're not involved in their lives. You're not present. You're, whenever you're there, you're on your phone, you're doing your own things, or you're just not there. You come home late, so you don't know what's going on in your own children's lives. So presence is, I think, one of the biggest challenges with, uh, with fatherhood today. Um, I think a lot of us engage in um, what I call presentism. So you're physically there but you're not, you're not engaged, you're not involved, you don't know. Uh, you don't know what kind of homework they do, you don't know what happens in school, you don't know what kind of challenges they're facing, but you, you consider yourself a father because you're present, which is, which is twisted really. I mean, I think we as, as, as men, all of us, need to be present in our children's lives. And for those who are aspiring to be fathers, I think that's one big, that's half of the job. If you're there, you're, you're physically and intellectually and emotionally present for your children, you'll have made a very big difference in their lives. And on that point, and I want to throw this to you, Bralin, because he's talking about fatherhood, whereby this is my son, this is my DNA. But then there's the other thing. You know when they say that uh, men are not, are not mentored, as a woman I can say this, that even if I didn't necessarily receive what I should have from my own mother, there were other women around me who held me up. They shared with me yeah. the secrets of womanhood. So I was always covered. Whenever I was in school, there'd be these sessions you'd be called to and you're talked to. So there was always someone pouring wisdom into you so that you can, so that you can avoid some certain mistakes and traps that women fell, fall into. Yeah. But for men, that is lacking. So he's talked about the role of a father. That is my son. Mm -hmm. So I want to look yeah. at masculinity in general because we live in a society whereby that is not my son, but because he is a man, he is masculine, <coughs> I will now mentor him, but sometimes not necessarily in a positive way. Right. Um, times are changing, I do believe, uh, where, you see, for women, it's a bit easier because you talk a lot. Mm -hmm. If I sit next to, would you sit next to a fellow woman, you're doing the same hairstyle, you are best of friends. Then you start talking and you start learning nuggets of wisdom from each other. For us men, when we open up our vulnerability, we feel it's showing weakness. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, if you asked women, if this were women in the audience and you said, uh, can two of you just say something about what you, go, what you went through? You asked for two, but 50 will raise their hands. Men, 
you'll ask for 50, but only two will raise their hands. Now, what has happened when you talk to men, like when we did the men's conference, you don't really ask them what they're going through. We know what you're going through as men. So you speak and let each carry what they need to carry and move on. And then at the end, you hope that men can talk with each other. You understand? Like, for example, I may be best friends with Dan, Mr. Dan Masinde, and we've known each other for 20 years in as far as friendship is concerned. And maybe there are two things that have been killing me for 15 years, and I don't tell him. And then one time he, he hears this guy committed suicide, then he'll be like, hang on a minute. But I just talked to him yesterday. We were having a beer yesterday. We were watching football yesterday. Good times. Yes. So now we need to get to a space where the ones who have the revelation of now going back to the trenches. To the trenches is because we were wounded there. And not just to say now let's go drink so that our wounds don't hurt much, but it's to deal with those wounds that they scrap them, that they hurt so much, but for a short time and then we move on. But the biggest excuse we have as men is our fathers didn't do it. For how long are we going to use this as an excuse? Because we'll die saying that. It's like in America, the black American says, uh, uh, I'm not, uh, my father was in jail. So if I go to jail, it's okay. It is not okay. So let's get to a place our fathers dropped the baton. Well, the rest doesn't end there. Pick up the baton, clean it so that if I get a son, then I will not have to transfer the sins of my father to my son. And, and just as a uh, water break, I mean, think about it. Some here have uh, kids and they don't know about them. Can we find out about that? Yes. How many say they have kids and they don't know where the kids, they don't know anything about the kids? Show of hands. Can we hear from you? How did you get those kids and why? Okay, we know today? how they got them. We, we know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no need okay. of that. <laughs> <laughs> or rather, what were the circumstances? <laughs> We as men, we know it. We know. Yeah. <laughs> Don't empty. <Yeah. laughs> Don't open the tin. Yes, yes. <laughs> OK. So Kevin Ukuramto, you were how old? Almost 11. So almost 11. Yeah. And why, why is it that you're not actively fathering your child? You know, the money long story. Kulengana na mali ni megroia, na venya ni megroiwa. OK, ni mini ni mtu ni a single parent. Nani father, ambaye tumegro na e, ajani onyasha kukua nini. Yani yo umani, umani hold. So, sisi kulingana na sisi tumezaliwa a group of tutuko vijana watano na msichana moja. Na venya tumelelewe nyewe. Hile tu mtu anajipeanga motisha, anajipatia. E, just be a man. Kulingana na yo kizungu ili tokea. To be a man. Ambaya tu kuambiwa to be a man in a kuwaja. So, situ na guro ingitu na ayo. Na kwa hii society venye hiko, kulingana na venye tu na guro. Kuna mamanzi yapa, kuna nini. Yo mambo yeo, lazima tujue venye kuna end. So, ulipata mtu hiki wana age gani? As two or eight, nilikuwa 18 years. 18? Yeah. Na sa, mama mtoto wakenda na mtoto venye muliachana? Sisemi tuliachana cause by then, siku anajijua kulingana na maisha. So ata hamkuwa pamoja kwa chana? Eh, yeah, but we were in a relationship. So katika yo relationship, jindo nasemanga matunda hili tokea ama ni. Na mbono uja fuatilia mtu iwako? Siku ana mtu wakunishika mkona ni ambie fanya hivi na hivi. Sasa ila advice ya mzazi, kama mama, mzazi ya kuambie hivi na hivi. So me by then sikuwa ni me catch up na maisha. Sikuwa ni kona rika rika ngapi sa hivi? Let's say in ten years. Ten years kijana mschana. Kijana. Kijana kama wewe. Kama me. So when you say ma how kuwa na mtu wa kuku shikam kono yeah. pia mtu iwako one day one time if you don't step up <coughs> ata say ma tu kwa kikao kama i pia mimi si namtu wa kunishika. We are coming to that, and Robert, I want you to answer him, yeah? And uh -huh. just, let's hear a second person very quickly, then I want you to answer him, uh-huh. Okay, naitwa Evans. Actually, minu nimekuwa na mtoto, lakini kese yangu nitafauti na uyu rafiki yangu vile maongea. Mtoto wako kuna rika ngapi sasa hivi? Kwa sasa ni six years. Six years? Yeah. Na unakubali kwamba you are not actively fathering your child? Yeah, with a reason. Sababu gani? Okay, um, the lady nilikuwa nai, by that time nilikuwa 18 years. Nilikuwa 18, na being that, njia uh, damu pia ilikuwa imechemuka. So, ikawa na mnaiyo wakapata mimba. Then, uh, tuka court for some time, nikijaribu kunini kuona kama tunazafanya mambo 
iwe sawa because we had dreams together so ikafika time tukaona ai will we manage really to take care of the child na pia kazi hakuna eje tu pia ni vile ilikuwa tukaona ai wacha tujaribu tu pambani but ikawa namna hiyo then uh, ikafika time akaamua kuolewa na mtu mwingine so the person alikuwa na heshima yeye pia kaona the best thing ni kuchukua achukue huyo mwanamke na achukue pia mtoi ndio amshughulikie nisije nikajifanya na ingia kwa sababu ya mtoi wangu ndio baadaye tu uh, nimchukue mwanamke baadaye so akaona the best way ni ni cut off completely so huo huo wazai nikaamua tu kunini kujiandoa so ikawa namna hiyo na mtoto wako kijana msichana ni kijana is a boy yeah so robert please address the two men in the i'll start with my brother here um, he said when it, now when it comes to taking care of his child he says there was nobody to hold his hand did you ask for somebody to hold your hand when you're removing your trouser if you are mature enough to remove your trouser do not enjoy the intimacy and run away from the responsibility mimi nitakwambia hivi excuse wacha ile uchungu uko nayo vile mzazi wako uko uko na wewe utaki kijana wako uko nayo uchungu kwa zitakuwa tena double usanielewa so what i would urge you una marafiki una vijana uko na mentors unaweza ongea nao all you need to do sikiza kwanza sana microphone <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but i want us to get to a place of let's kill the excuses yeah. because every seven days of excuses is a week wasted for reconciliation and restoration ile ninge kuambia una marafiki au vijana unazoongea nao hapa ukiongea na vijana watano hapa ile mwaidha utapata itakuwa kubwa sana hata si lazima wako na watoto ndio wakupate mwaidha unacheki wewe utafuta kijana wako si lazima ukuwe na pesa si jumu nulie matoys umpeleke movies hapana ile wanataka kuna mtu amesema hapa it's you yeye kitu alitaka ni presence ya baba yake mm-hmm. so we you don't care about money wengine usema i don't have money to go and spend time with my kids hawataki pesa kwanza ndika 10 years anataka presence yako aone baba yangu iko hapa ananiambia mimi ni mtu wa maana hizo words zako are heavier than any bank account tafuta kijana wako na ukuje utumbe mpata kijana wako Jibu jibu sana. Ndio hivyo vanyo umesema sikatai. Lakini sasa kuna ile unaambi wangu kuna unajua pia huyu msichana alikuwa na familia yao. So and the family who decide to take the girl away from you male utamuona. So unaona pia hiyo ni mambo mengine inatokea hapo so unaamua okay kama ime imekuwa hivyo acha ikuwe you mean by then sikuwa na nini naweza fanya kitu by then bado ndo niko najifundisha maisha sikuwa nimejua maisha kitu ta kitu ta that is very similar to what he was asking yes. so if you connect Both the two, so how can we help young men especially navigate unajua as long as wamekata uone mtoto na wewe ukubali mtoto ajui hiyo anafikiri baba yangu ameniwa ameniwaacha what would advice uko 28 size ndio 29 29 eh tafuta kama uko na pastor ama uncles waende uonge na hiyo familia unaanza hivyo kwanza same to that gentleman there because this is your seed nobody hata kama umeolewa na millionaire ama president nobody should ever keep you away from your seed because that is your child so tafuta wazee waende waonge na wazee wazazi wa msichana unasikia wakikataa tafuta pasta wakikataa kuna makao court inaitwaje children's court children's court enda kwa children's court because wewe nikikuangalia hivi even the gentle evans eh? you seem to be very mature people muna watu mnaheshima mkienda kwa court mwambie court listen mimi nina mtoto na huyu mwanamke wamekata nyuma na mtoto wangu court watasikia because sasa ukiangalia mambo ya court what they do is what is best for the child So atasema maybe once twice a month and a one mtoto spend time na mtoto but don't let anybody because wacha nikwambie kitu moja at some point huyo mtoto atakuuliza maswali ngumu sana na atakuuliza mbona haukunipigania the one thing about a man you must be a warrior na siko ubaya ati unapiga mtu mangumi but a warrior saying i have responsibilities i have to take care of my seed let me tell you hata kama uliona mtu mwingine that will never be the biological father so as long as you're alive Go to bed knowing you tried your best to be a part of your child's life. Sawa. Yeah. I want to connect here with uh, 
with Dara. Yeah. 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 Mm. So there's something that's coming out, and I'm a woman. Yeah. Yeah. And this one, I'll take the bullet for my sisters, because I know sometimes when a woman has a child with a man, and the relationship doesn't work for whichever reason. Sometimes women we are very emotional creatures. Mm. So as women, you will use that child as a shield or as a weapon against that man. So what would you advise the young men? Because I'm seeing that's an issue that's now coming up. Yeah. Yeah. So it's either that I wanted to, but then because I nikata, nikatupa mkono. Yeah. You know, Evans actually asked a question, who am I? You are the father. That's the, that's the answer to your question. You are the father. And let me just say this. Yes, sometimes some women use children as ammunition. It does happen. And sometimes also some men also uh, uh, claim that they were trapped by the woman to get a child. Yeah. Let me tell you, no one trapped you. You had an erection, you, you decided to go in and without wearing any particular thing, and then you, you did whatever had, had to happen, and then you became a father. So it was not a trap. You know, it was not a trap. You willingly participated in the act. So if you do not want to be with the woman or the woman doesn't want to be with you, it's okay. You can still work out co-parenting agreement. You yeah. can be like me, sikutaki, ama unitaki, lakini mtoto ni uko innocent. Wacha ni kuwepo kwa mtoto wangu. Mm. And let me, say, let me say this also. When it comes to a man, one big question that you need to ask yourself is, when I die, what will people remember me for? Today, ask yourself that. Enda kwa kio, ujulize. When I die, what do people remember me for? Because let me tell you something. One day, utakufa. Ni reality. Utakufa. 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 Aje, uh, ule deadbeat father, ule chali manga, ule chali nafanya nini. Ama, ama will it be like, I'm a man who had a vision when alifanya kitu fulani. Because a lot of us men, we need to heal. We're hurting other people because we have not healed. Yeah. Either it was the, the dad who was absent who hurt us, the mother that <coughs> who raised us who was very, very bitter. Maybe because she was a single mother and kwa kisirani kila saa. Or it was the first woman you fell in love with. Ile ukwili, akakudamu. So you're, you're going around hurting other women because of that. So please, bro, please, Charlie, heal. Fona. Because sometimes we say boy child has been neglected, but then we're running away from people who we can be accountable to. We have the pastors. We have mentors. We have even friends who genuinely care for you. But rapata wewe, ule saluta hang out na e, ule salimu ya tazidi, wendele kwa yo giza. So please, come out of that darkness. Tafuta wale machali wanye tairu wana jijua na wanye otakusaidia pewe kujijua. Usitame peke yako, sisi tuko. Sawa. Absolutely. And Mamkush, on this, what do you have to add? Ah, uh, mi yako, yangu nitasema maisha ni kama huiru baru. Inaenda maali unaizukuma. Yeah. <laughs> you know? True. And if you stop pushing huiru baru, it, it does not move. Mm. Sasa, ukipush in the wrong direction, you are 100% right. Uki push in the positive one, you hundred percent right. Maisha it is paid with your choice. Sio kwa sababu ulianguka, ukae hapo kwa matope na uambiaga watu niombe ni mukieda church. Na una uwezo wa kuamuka na kubadilisha mai? maisha. Kwa hivyo hali ya kubadilisha maisha iko mikononi mwenu. Iko mikononi mwako. Ukishika simu kama hii ya burara ya pesa mingi, suwe stoa yangu. <laughs> yangu ni yani, yangu ni mulika mwizi. Nisaidia na simu yako, burara. <laughs> Dio nionekane kwa TV na simu ya pesa mingi. <laughs> hii simu, uhayu wake, <laughs> uko mikononi mwangu. Na kifo chake, kiko mikononi mwangu. Hivi mm. divyo umeshika maisha yako. You can decide to let it go, or you can decide to hold it. Sisi hapa, tukitoka hapa, kila mtu wanaenda zake. Na wewe unaenda zako. Lakini umegawa nini kwa hapa? Kama kuna kitu unagawa kwa hii panel, fuata huyo mtu. Mwambie tulikuwa na wewe mahali fulani, ukasema nini? Sasa nimekufuata. Show me the direction, show me the way. Nionyeshe. Aidha akurudishe kwa pasta, ama akurudishe kwa brare, ama akurudishe kwa huyu sister, labda hata ni single, so you are struggling. Na you know. Na mwangu hapa ni Obviously, today I'm majoring on men. I'm the only woman in this audience, so I have to be humble, but I'm learning, and I hope that you're learning as well. And remember, it's very important, and you guys will usually write to me and tell me, Tamima, you focus too much on the ladies. So right now, I'm making it an agenda. We must hold our boy child. Lazima to akikishe that our boy child are growing into strong men because with strong men, we have strong families, and with strong families, we have a strong society. Well, we'll be right back after this break.
Welcome back to Real Talk. Now, our conversation on manhood continues, and earlier on we were talking about the role of a father, and of course, it just came out that we have so many young men with children who they have abandoned either by choice or either through circumstance. And I just want you, Mongera, to speak on this, yeah. because I think really at the heart of each of us, we know what is right and we know what is wrong. So if there is a father, and I'm saying father, because ata kama hauko kwa ile maisha ule mtoto, ni mtoto wako, wewe ni baba. Mm -hmm. yes. So how, where can a man start when they want to reconnect with their child? Yeah. I think I, I like what Robert said earlier. Um, you have to make an effort. You, you can't sit there and say, you know, my, the mama mtoto amenikata, so that's it, nisha hapo. I mean, life is full of rejection. There'll always be people who don't want to give you what you want. So takatu hapo without fighting for whatever you want. You have to decide in your heart that this is my son, this is my daughter, I'm going to fight for this person. This person is somebody's mother, that is somebody's father. That child, 10, 15 years from now, is going to be somebody's father. And I'm going to make sure that as his father, I'm going to do everything I can to raise this child. So you can't just give up and say, you know, I've been rejected, so that's it. Life is full of rejection. People will refuse to give you what you want. You'll go for jobs. Are you just going to sit at home doing nothing? You're a man, you know? You have to take responsibility for whatever, whatever belongs to you. So I think the first step is deciding that this is my child and I'm going to do everything I can to, to be part of this child's life. The next thing you have to do is you have to fight for that child, right? You're going to be up against people who don't want you to be in that child's life, but you have to fight for that child. You have to realize that if you're not present in that child's life, one day that child will ask questions and they'll say, my dad abandoned me, my dad left me alone and he refused to fight for me. So it doesn't matter what you, what you intended to do or elect to do on a plan, what matters is what you actually did, right? So take the step, uh, fight for that child, go out there and do it. I think it's also important that you also get your life together. Jipange, yeah? because you, you can't just go there and say, Ati, I'm the father of this child, so bring that child. You have to jipanga, you have to be ready, you have to be in order, your, your affairs have to be in order, right? Get your things together, make sure that you're, you're earning that money, make sure that you're, you're stable yourself. So that when you go for that child and fight for that child, they, the, the, the parents, the mother of that child will see that this is someone who actually knows what they're doing. Half the time, Mliachana, because she didn't think that you are organized enough or that you are ready for it. So show them that you're ready. Yeah, get your affairs in order and go and fight for that child. And on that point, because we have a point muhimu, jipange. So, tena, sazingine pia wanaume, wanafil ni kama, eh, squeezy life ni gumu, economy ni tough. So you have young men on one side, they are trying to date, but the girls, they want mtu mwenye tampeleka holiday, mtu atamnunulia dinner, yet you have a young man who's just starting out. Yeah. So probably talking to the young brothers. Yeah. As a man, where do you start when it comes to this thing called jipange? Yeah, that's a good question to me, Ma. You know, the truth is, no matter how rich somebody is, alianza somewhere. Right? That person you see when you're drive you of VX, Alianza somewhere. Yeah. All right? he, he wasn't born like that. Okay. But then, for most men, you started from somewhere. And that's the important thing. You have to realize that as a man, you're not where you want to be right now, but you're working towards it. And as long as you have a plan, as long as you know what you're working towards, and you're busy, you're engaged in it, you're not just sitting back and saying, oh, life is hard, no, you fight, you work towards it. So the first thing is knowing that you're not where you, you want to be, but you're, you're working on a plan to get there. Uh, and that's the most important thing, because nobody, is, nobody started from, from, from the top. Everybody starts from the bottom and builds up. And Mankush, Monaume, unajipangaje? First thing, I'll tell these young people and everybody who is watching us that I'm a father of two boys and one girl. All of them are married. Uh, are married. I'm a grandfather of five, and I'm still variable. <laughs> and still young. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, I have a jipangad. <laughs> but this man has a very good point. Everybody started somewhere. Na maisha ile inaanza juu, si mazuri. Vitu mbili zinaanza juu, abazo hazinifuraishi. Ni grave na cho. Zinaanza kutoka juu zikiteremuka. Otherwise, Hilton... Grad regent, is your hotel kubwa, hakuna ilianza juu, zote zilianza wapi? Can I tell you that I was a pit rat in Diga? I'm a professional one. Kuchimba cho hivi. Nilikuwa naandika my two brothers. That I, I started there. Now me, somebody seeing me driving this car. 
and start saying ah watu ni wale wanaiba serikali no 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 kwanza angalia ni kitiba cho na ndio hawa nataka kuambia most of them they don't want effort they want comfort instant they want instant no wonder that is why every radio station in Kenya has made our young people gabras and i'm not sorry to say this enda kwa tv fungulia tv sikiza radio weka hivi weka hii weka hii ukiweka hii utapata 1500 1500 gani na nani alipata out out of what you alipata angalia from 47 point something million people ni mtu mmoja amepata hiyo company imepata watu pesa watu wangapi yeah they have forgotten the basic things hard work hard work even not hard work work smart You get me? Because at the end of the day you need food. Naambiaga watu kanisani. Mimi siwezi kukuombea ati upate chakula. Pepo ya chakula haisibishwi na maombi, inasibishwa na ugali na mboga. <laughs> you have to work for it. Siwezi kwenda petrol station isimamisha gari yangu, nianze kusema ku raba shekher ya ntajaza, rika to jazika. Kwa watu wanapiwa tani chapa bwana. Jinsi ya kupata pesa there are only four things. Number one, work. Number two, work. Number three work and number four work. Because money is a reward after solving somebody's problem. You see, so that you can be so, 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 that, you, so that you can be where my brother is saying that you are responsible, you are caring. You are responsible with what? It's with money. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 19 that uh uh party is made for laughter. Wine makes heart merry. But money is the answer of everything. Hiyo haihubiriwi. Unaona? Watu wanahubiriwa vile watatajirika. Excuse me, unataka kutajirika? Ah. Si ndio? Aende ukafanye kazi. There's no shortcut. No shortcut. That's that, that's very true. Um you will never get a prayer for for money. You just the Bible says I will bless the work of your hands, so it's work. But I know there's pressure on you young men. And I'm sure there's some ladies who are watching. Uh, they put you, not all, but some of the ladies go and date rich men, sponsors, and then they come to these young men and expect the young men to perform mm -hmm. in the level of the sponsors. Now, if there's a lady who's putting you under that pressure as a man, you don't have to reach the level of that sponsor for you to prove you're a man. In fact, the greatest way to prove you're a man is to walk away from such a kind of lady. You understand? So start at your own pace and at your own place. Wacha compete nao mabona za watu wale wanachukua wasichana wenyu na wa VX wewe uko na vits unafikiri sasa unataka ku, ku, kufanya gambling with VX don't you'll put yourself under pressure you'll go into a depression you will die your children will miss you so what he said is get your place in order before and getting in order is not money first is your identity i think you said that yeah. mm -hmm. identity is an inside job Jijoyo ni mwanaume kwanza the money does not make you the fact that you have a child Evans and my friend here the fact that you sired some children you know as a man your presence is important then inculcate values on your children and then work comes that you may give them comfort but let me tell you if you ask your children what do you want a sweet from dad or just spending time with dad i can bet my bottom dollar nine out of ten will say i want to see my father here so mujipange let me tell you young men you don't have to be rich fast to take care of your children when you were sleeping around you did not look at your bank account it's an erection that uh, that controlled you but having said that i am not a believer of having sex before marriage it happened it happened but from now on hizo zip wekeni juu mpaka sale mtao najua utaki kusikia story lakini sawa let me take two questions We have two questions from the audience. Let's talk those two questions as we wind up. We are pressed for time. Ah, ni hazard. Ningependa kuchangia mada ni sema hivi. Kuna aina mbili ya wanaume. Kuna kama wanaume na mwanaume. Kama wanaume ni ule mwanaume ataita dem. Eh? Amuoneshaje? So come to ndi hivi. Na hakuna chenye penye wanaweza saidia na idea ama kitu fulani. Mwanaume ni ule kujitambua na unaambia demu kweli. Nisaidia na hivi kimaisha ama hivi na hivi. Aina haja de, mwanaume kuharibia demu maisha. Na hakuna akisharibu ukishamwaribia maisha utamwacha aende. 
na we 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 wende hivyo hivyo asante so and as we wind up because we are pressed for time so probably Diane, i want yeah. you to talk about cuz there's someone who said that damu ni moto inachemka mm. mm. so i want you to touch briefly on that and uh, mongera i want you to talk about as a man how can you be emotionally available and at the same time being strong in tough times okay uh, so let me let me say this sir eh? If you if you're a young man then definitely your organ is actually working and if it's working shukuru mungu lakini ikishukuru mungu imanishi ku irresponsible with it ukwe hii itaiweka na ngoja nitapata ule mwanamke mwenye nitamuonyesha nikikaa bibi yangu nitamshona pia nitazinga familia mzuri sana na yeye so ask yourself this do you remember sexuality itakuleta mashida nyingi sana either you will get an infection you will impregnate a woman or you feel really really bad about yourself You know sometimes us men we act like we don't care when we do this to women but actually we do tukifunga hiyo mlango tukijangalia atupendi the kind of man that we are right we feel bad about ourselves and we're like you know what why do I keep doing this in my counseling sessions i've had men break down wana wana sema kwa nini nilifika hapa what happened and some of them are so old maybe they are my, they're in their 60s and they wonder that thing nilipitia when i was in my 20s i wish i addressed it so right now we're speaking to you Young as you are, address whatever issues you may have and be sexually responsible. Please be responsible with your commando. Your commando will be vizuri. Thank you, Dan. Yes. And yeah. Mongera, very quickly. Yeah. So um, the thing is, we're not, you're not alone. Um, whatever it is that you're dealing with, whatever situation you're in, you're not alone. I mean, we've just heard from two men right now who are in the same situation. And I'm sure if we are all honest, maybe some of us are dealing with the same issue. So the truth is, you're not alone. One of the reasons why men struggle, why men suffer, because you think you're all alone. I'm the only person who's dealing with this. You're not, yeah? All of us have issues. We all have things that we're struggling with. Mm. Because we're, we're men, we're human beings. So that's the first thing. Be, remember that you're not alone. And when you know that you're not alone, then you look for help. Because it's not a shameful thing to look for help. If you need help with something, you look for help and you get that help that, that you need. So that's what I'd advise. Uh, for you to be emotionally available for, for your children means that you yourself have to be emotionally stable. And that means that you have to take care of the things that you're dealing with. Yeah. Um, find help. Get someone to help you. Okay, right. And I have definitely learned a lot. And I really hope that you as the men watching this show have as well. And the women as well. Because we are getting insights into what do men really need. Because tunajua mwanaume anafakuwa strong, yasiri. Lakini at the end of the day, there are people just like us. They feel, they go through pain, they go through insecurities. And I really do pray that through this show, somebody somewhere was touched. You learn something and you'll see some transformation in your life. Well, that's it from me, Tanima. Until next time, this has been Real Talk. Special thanks to E-Plus for medic and ambulance services.